Well, one of the states that has instituted a near total abortion ban is Idaho. The law has been in conflict there with the federal law known as the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, when pregnant people facing serious medical complications cannot be helped in Idaho unless their lives are actually in danger. This is what had the law. This is what had the law in front of the Supreme Court this week, as the abortion issue continues to be front and center. Now, of course, just in Idaho, but all around the country. Melissa Wintrow is the minority leader of the Idaho State Senate and was in Washington D.C. this week, and she joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us, and good morning to you. Uh, this has been a really contentious issue in the country and even um, on the court. So, what are some of your main takeaways? What was argued, and how those arguments were received by the justices? Well, I mean, first of all, it was really good to be there with my colleague, Representative Rubel, when those arguments were happening because when the Attorney General and the uh, GOP legislators came out, you know, basically talking about the case and they, you know, they don't know why doctors are leaving. That's just not true. They're just not listening. We have a total abortion ban in our state. We've lost a quarter of our physicians, our OBGYNs. We've had three labor and delivery units closed down. We've lost half of our high risk, especially pregnancy doctors. Um, it is dangerous to be pregnant in Idaho. And for the GOP leaders to come out of that courtroom and doubt doctors is sheer arrogance and dismissiveness. It's really shocking what women are going through here in Idaho. They're having to be airlifted to other states for their safety. And this case really is just about a sliver of folks who are facing a crisis in their pregnancy and deserve abortion care if it will stabilize them to save their life as well as long-term health. What's so jarring about what you just said is the exodus of doctors mm -hmm. from, you know, let's be honest, yeah. a fairly small state when compared to others. I mean, that kind of exodus, I mean, what statistically does that leave women with in Idaho if such a large chunk of doctors are, are packing their bags? It's really terrible. It's created a hole in our health care system that we're not going to dig out for decades. We have 44 counties in Idaho, and half of them do not have access to one single OBGYN. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's very dangerous to be pregnant in Idaho. I've heard from people personally who are moving out of state, who are scared to get pregnant in Idaho, who's kids are leaving for college and won't come back here so you know again for our you know republican colleagues to just dismiss the physicians over and over uh for telling them why they're leaving is again sheer arrogance and the idaho coalition for safe health care did a poll of physicians who said 96 percent of them said they would consider staying if the legislature actually created a real health exception where a woman could get abortion care if her life was in jeopardy and her permanent health was being threatened and they continue to just um, ignore those women as well as the physicians. And it's truly harmful to the entire medical system. And what do you make of that disconnect? Uh, I spent some time working in Boise for two and a half years and people forget just how rural a lot of the state is. And so there already is kind of that medical desert, I guess you would call it, where not everyone has direct access to a doctor, but that disconnect that you just talked about, the polling and then people who want access to that, but then the state legislature is doing something completely different. How do you grapple with that? Well, I think we've seen in Idaho in recent history where the people have had to do what the legislature won't do because they won't listen. And extremist politics have really taken over our state and taken us to more than an unreasonable stance. And recently we saw a group come out talking about initiating a ballot initiative. But again, the unfortunate part about that is Idaho's legislature every year tries to do something to take away voters' rights and access to the ballot. So, you know, it's a real quandary here. But to your question, what do I make of it? I think the Republican politicians are so deep in this, they just continue to justify, you know, their actions and blame physicians and patients instead of really taking accountability for their own actions. And uh, for two sessions in a row since this ban went into effect, Legislators have not effectively listened to the citizens. The Idaho statesman did a recent poll, I think it was last year, 
and 85% uh, of the people they polled said they believed that there should be a health exception for abortion care, and 88% believed to save the life of the mother. However, they continue to just sidestep that, and again, I think it's mostly because of the extremist nature of politics in our state. The Republican Party platform basically says there is no room for abortion at all for any reason, not even rape, incest, health or life of the mother, and that they would call it murder and criminalize the physicians and the woman. Almost out of time, but I'm just curious as to your gut sense on what the Supreme Court will do here now that uh, it's in their hands. Well, I don't feel real secure about the court because out of the blue on their own in January, they decided to lift the injunction and um, because we had Imtala protecting women. And as I said, since January, since the Supreme Court did that, we've had to airlift six women out according to just one medical provider in the state. And after we saw them erase 50 years of precedent two years ago, I don't have a lot of faith in this court and the, politic the politicization of the court is really deeply troubling for the health and safety and rights of women in our country in the future. All right, Idaho State Senator Melissa Wintrell, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.